When my grandma held my mother, Susan, for the very first time and saw her little body, she realized that my mom was covered in hair. Hairy shoulders, hairy face, a big poof of black hair on her head. My grandma's face turned to disgust, and she said, I've given birth to a monkey. <laughs> My grandmother was an Irish hairless lass who fell in love with a Pakistani grad student and had my mom. My mom had more hair on her head as a baby than my grandmother had on her entire adult body. So began my mother's shame. And when my mom married my very hairy, very Italian father, that shame and hair was passed along to me. A woman with dark, thick hair everywhere you can grow it. I wish I could say that I turned the shame into triumph, that I am one of those women who grows out her armpit hair with reckless abandon and wears a bathing suit with bush gardens of springing. <laughs> but it's not how I was raised. By the time I was six, my hairiness was the talk of my first grade class. My bully, Ashley Oswell, asked, <laughs> yeah, uh, she asked, why are your legs so hairy? And told me, you know you can shave that, right? I took her advice while on a family vacation. I had seen commercials with women shaving their legs and thought it looked simple enough. So while I was taking a bath, I took my mom's razor and started the job. As I began shaving, I started picturing Ashley's face. When she saw my super smooth gams, then she'd fucking see that little blonde-haired, blue-eyed bitch. <laughs> she'd see that I have gorgeous, hairless legs. Unfortunately, while picturing this fantasy, my shaving had become more of a carving. <laughs> After two minutes, the pristine shine of the bathtub had become stained with blood. Having heard a little bit about periods, I briefly considered that perhaps <laughs> I had begun menstruating during my revenge fantasy. <laughs> when I realized that wasn't the case, I started screaming for my mom. When she came into the bathroom, she started screaming. <laughs> she then packaged me up with band-aids and vowed to become my hairy Sherpa. <laughs> After I told her how Ashley had started calling me Sam the Man, my mom nared my legs for me. For the smooth-legged and uninitiated, nair is a cream you put on your legs that removes hair. How does it do this? Chemicals, baby! <laughs> Chemicals that, in addition to removing a six-year-old's hair, can corrode metal and kill dolphins. <laughs> Not surprisingly, I had a very bad reaction to nair. I had welts all over my legs. But guess what? They weren't hairy. <laughs> My mom's favorite poison for hair concealing was bleach. I have never met anyone else that does this. But I guess my mom's thought was, why remove the hair when you can lighten it? That way, only the light of the sun will reveal your hairy little secret. <laughs> At least once a month after my dad went to bed, I would sit on the bathroom counter as my mom applied bleach to my upper lip and my arms. When my hair lightened, my mom and I would catch up about everything. What stress was happening at her job, stories about when she was little, gossip about our family friends. My mom was someone who was always surrounded by women, sipping wine and telling stories. During these bathroom sessions, I felt like I transcended Harry daughter and became just one of the girls. I also took this time to ask her all of my burning questions about puberty, like, the other day when my stomach ached for a while and then I had gas, I saw something in my underwear. Was that my period? <laughs> my mom smiled and very gently said, no, I think that might have been something else. <laughs> when I was 15, my mom decided to up the ante for both of us. She bought us a package for laser hair removal. My mom was going to get it done on her face while she had decided my most pressing areas were my stomach and back. Honestly, I was looking forward to this outing. 
Every six weeks, my mom and I went to a spa and laid next to each other as technicians fried our hair follicles. <laughs> the laser hair removal itself was incredibly painful, as the technology in 2005 hadn't quite been perfected. Many times during the session, my mom would have to hold my hand while tears streamed down my face. My mom and I walked away after eight sessions, only slightly less fuzzy than before. But laser hair removal had brought my mom and I closer. It was during these sessions that my mom let me know that if I, need, if I needed it, she'd help me get on birth control. She'd say, for now, the pill is best for you. But when you get into a regular rhythm, you should get the IUD. She said this like the pill was for girls with boyfriends, but the IUD was for women with a roster. <laughs> As the topic of sex came up more and more with my mom, I popped one of my little questions. I said, Mom, do men really care if you're hairy? Like, will they not want to date me? Without missing a beat, and with the wisdom of a woman with an IUD, my mom said, I've never had one complaint. <laughs> At 23, I moved away from home and felt I needed to take things up a notch for my big city lifestyle in San Francisco. I started getting Brazilian waxes. This was out of my mom's league. She didn't get why people did this. Many people don't. <laughs> And I really can't sell it to you as a service other than it having a result that makes me feel better. But the service itself always makes me feel like I'm partaking in some kink that I will one day tell my lover I'm not actually that into. <laughs> Looking back, I realized the decision to get Brazilian waxes was a response to being homesick. I missed the bonding my mom and I had when we were bleaching and lasering. It seemed like it was the only time we could be really vulnerable with each other. With my dad and my two brothers, we were outnumbered, but when we were alone together, we were free to embrace femininity, emotion, and all the hair in between. When my niece was born, she too was covered in hair from head to toe. As I held her for the very first time, my mom said, she's one of us! <laughs> we hugged her even tighter. We then began talking about the hair removal ways of our people we'd have to show her. <laughs> she was our little monkey. My mom never made me feel like I was disgusting for being hairy, even if her first impulse was to remove it. Unlike her mom who had shamed her, my mom protected me. These hair removal rituals she showed me felt more like an exchange of loving advice, a desire to remove any friction I might have from the outside world a passage through which removing hair would help me belong. I looked forward to my mom embracing my future hairy daughter and welcoming her to the hairy fold, but that day will never come. In 2020, my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. In a matter of months, it rapidly progressed and ravaged her entire body, taking her beautiful hair in the process. Just eight months after she was diagnosed, she passed away. I never lost anyone that close to me before. In the midst of the pandemic, I was desperately trying to soothe myself, looking for signs that my mom was still alive. I replayed her voicemails while looking at photos of her. I had dreams of her in which I'd say, don't leave. I'd play her favorite songs and sleep away days, hoping that when I woke up, she'd be alive again. I subscribed to unconventional methods as well. Any trash can I saw that fell over, I would consider that a wave from my mom. One time, I believed I saw an orb in a picture of my mom and called my dad to tell him about it before realizing it was just a part of the frame. I was truly down bad searching for signs of my dead mom. <laughs> With no real signs aside from the occasional fallen trash can, I turned inward. I looked for ways I could improve myself, accepting that since I couldn't bring my mom back, I'd at least fix me. This brought me back to a laser hair removal session. I decided to give it another whirl, this time on my legs. They told me that as a treat, they'd throw in my armpits and bikini area. A treat indeed. <laughs>
During my first session, my technician, Allie, was immediately comforting. She told me all about how she's actually known her boyfriend since she was 15. Then she told me that she absolutely loves Burbank, California, the place where my mom was born. When I told her about my mom, she asked what her name was, and I replied, Susan. She looked at me and smiled so big. That's my mom's name, too. Thank you. Give it up for Sam DeSalvo!